Hello, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video, along with means by which you can support the podcast via Patreon and Coffee should you choose to do so. I'm here with a quick Yarn and Yarns extra today and something really exciting has happened. So as you can see, I'm not in my any of my usual <laughs> filming locations. Um, it's about six o'clock in the evening and I've hijacked James's office. As you can see, poor old James is a very patient man. Even James's office has not <laughs> escaped the emptying of the shop. I've got a cabinet full of uh, sewing threads behind me, which I need to try and find room for in the new retail space, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. <laughs> Anyway, I've been at work today and literally about 10 minutes after I left the house, James texted me to say, your e-spinner has finally arrived. <laughs> so as you can imagine, I was itching to get home all day, but um, I've been home for a couple of hours and I wasn't able to dive straight, straight in to playing with the e-spinner. But I'm ready now to unbox this. Um, I'm not sure how much time I'll get with it this evening. Um, but yeah, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Um, I'm not going to say where I purchased the e-spinner from. Um, there are plenty of outlets here in the UK, at least, where you can pick up Ashford products. Usually I would say where I purchase my items from, um, but I've not been 100% happy with the customer service that I got from this company, so I'm not going to promote them. Anyway, it's here now. <laughs> I just hope it works. <laughs> So I'm going to do a little bit of an unboxing and then um, at some point I'll have a little bit of a play on the wheel and put that in as well and we'll put this up as a yarn and yarns extra. So I have already um, opened the box as in slip the sellotape but I haven't <laughs> gone any further than that I promise um, but I didn't want to be faffing around with a knife or whatever to open the box for five minutes. So let's get stuck in. So the e-spinner comes in its own um, carry case. So obviously it's all packed away down the side here. Um, I'm going to assume that this box here probably has the power cord in it. Uh, so yeah. And then I'm just going to take this case out. I'll move that into shot in a minute, just check to see what else is in here. I've got the um, instruction manual and it looks like some marketing material in the back. So we can, push that box aside and we'll bring the bag back into the shot. So it's a nice uh, sort of sturdy carry case um, with Ashford uh, wheels and looms printed on the side. Um, I apologise if the light um, is a little bit sub-optimal um, but as I say it's getting late in the evening and I wanted to have a chance to try and play with this this evening so I thought um, if I didn't do this now um, it wouldn't get done and I know that a few of you have uh, messaged me to ask whether my wheel has arrived so I think some of you have been looking forward to this as much as I have. <laughs> okay so obviously everything is packaged up because it's brand new so let's try and so the e-spinner comes with these giant bobbins which it's great, I'm going to be able to fit a lot of fibre on those. Um, I'm also hoping, because this is an Ashford, that the um, gorgeous 3D printed bobbin that um, Caroline's husband um, printed for me is going to fit on this, but I shall um, play with that another day. We'll just unpack everything here for now. Let's see what's in here. So these are all the bits and pieces by the looks of it. Um, I can see the tension knobs and the brake bands and everything in there. So I need to keep those handy. A few more bobbins by the looks of things. And then there is a fiber sample pack, 100% pure New Zealand wool, lovely natural colour and a bright green. The flyer. A 
Um, this, I believe, is... Oh, the light really is blowing this out. Sorry about this. I believe this is a Lazy Kate. So I'm going to assume that these bits are part of the Lazy Kate. Going on the fly here. I haven't really looked at the instruction manual, but I guess I will figure that out. And I'm assuming that you can put this um, Lazy Kate under tension, maybe. Um, there's a couple more holes in the bottom here, so... I guess I will figure that out as we go along. Put that to one side for now. One more box. Um, so this is the pedal you can use, I think, as a foot pedal, or I've seen um, people have it on the surface that they've got the spinner next to each other, which will um, stop the e-spinner um, once it's plugged in and going. And then we have the main body of the spinner itself. So I am going to mess around for a bit and try and get this set up. We're going to need to employ the use of that instruction manual and figure out what's what and see if we can get this thing going. So that took me a minute more than I wanted it to really, but <laughs> we're losing the light rapidly. The thing, I guess, is just everything's new and quite stiff and sticky. But in theory, we're all set up. Obviously, I haven't got a leader on yet, so I need to go find a scrap bit of yarn and then I can start spinning one of these um, bundles of fibre. But we've got some power, so this is the moment of truth. Hopefully when I twist this knob, whoo, yeah, it's going to start spinning. It's a little bit exciting. <laughs> right, so I need to go and find um, a piece of yarn that I can use as a leader. And yeah we can have our first spin okay so let's get this give this a whirl i've put my leader on i've got it through one of the yarn guides which i'm which i'm assuming is correct and then i'm going to assume we go through this side arm here i've got my orifice hook to pull this leader through be nicer if i had slightly better light than i've got now but it is what it is Hopefully that's going to do the job. Um, I've got the um, merino fibre that was um, like the little sample in the pack and I've just pulled a really skinny strip off that. So let's put the power on and then slowly start. Okay, so I've got twist going into my fibre but it's not on so let's just turn that off a minute until we figure this out put the tension up slightly see if that does the trick Turn the speed right down. Right, so I've turned the tension up too much now. Oops. Let's loosen that up a bit. See if we can get a the spin going. That's a bit better. I'm still a bit jerky. I don't think I'm drafting as fast as the wheel wants me to go. <laughs> oh, and that broke. 
but we've got a little bit of yarn, which is always good. I feel like everything's a little bit tight at the moment. There's not much room for manoeuvre. So I'm pulling this back. It's just breaking. That was a bit stronger. That's a bit better. There's a lot of twist in there, so maybe I need to put in more twist than I'm used to putting in on my treadle wheel to start with. Let's see if we can get ourselves going again. Just put that on stop and uh, see how we go with the plyback test. Oh yeah, there's plenty of good twist in there. You're not gonna really be able to see that. Just lay that over my hands and I'll see if I can um, zoom in. Uh, so yeah, my yarn's fairly stable. We're starting to fill up that bobbin, which is nice. And um, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> my first little attempt at spinning with the e-spinner. So I think I'm going to carry on for a little while. think we can tell by the change of the light that um, <laughs> I've been spinning away for a little while. I think maybe about an hour has passed and I had a little bit of um, a problem. I'm not sure if I captured it in any of the time lapse or anything um, in that my single broke, so the fibre that I'd spun broke and as I tried to um, join back on um, I was pulling the yarn through to try and thread it back through the orifice hook and it was just snapping so there wasn't enough twist in it um, so all I did to try and counteract that was I um, turned the speed up um, on the e-spinner just by half a notch so it was set at 11 o'clock on the dial and it's closer to 12 now but not quite um, and that seems to have done the trick so I've been spinning merrily away and I've just joined on my last piece of the white fibre um, and that slight adjustment in the speed made all of the difference i've got a pretty nice strong yarn now with a reasonable plyback test um i the light's just awful at the moment otherwise i would show you the plyback but um of course now i am spinning i am loath to stop <laughs> so i think for this evening I'm going to stop filming just because of the light situation um, but I'm going to spin the rest of this white fibre and then I'm going to also spin the green that was in that little sample pack that came with the e-spinner and then I'm going to um, probably ply up the two strands together so it'll be a fun kind of green and white um, really mulled little sample skein of yarn um, and that way I can also test out plying from the tensioned lazy cake because I've not used a tensioned lazy cake before. And that'll probably be a test for how um, strong my singles are. Um, so I'm going to spin the rest of these up and then I will save the plying and I'll include my first attempt at plying um, in this video too. Um, but I'll do the plying tomorrow when we've got a bit more daylight. Tell that the summer is coming to an end because, yeah, it's just past seven and it's not dark, but the sky is pretty grey and yeah the best of the daylight is gone so dark nights ahead <laughs> so it's a couple of days since the first section of this video and already i went off piste with my plans because 
I was going to use my attention to Lazy Cakes to ply from, um, but I decided when I spun up the green fibre, as you can see, I couldn't resist throwing on this 3D printed bobbin um, to my e-spinner to see if that would work. Um, this was very kindly um, printed for me by um, Caroline's husband, Caroline of Colourful Creativity. Her husband has a 3D printer and I sent him the measurements of the bobbin for my Ashford. Um, now this obviously is quite a bit smaller um, in terms of capacity um, than these jumbo bobbins but I wanted to throw it on to see if it would work and um, absolutely it does fit. Um, the only thing is I have a little bit less flexibility with the tension um, on my spinner when I'm using this um, because if you imagine we set the brake band up to go over this big jumbo bobbin so when it's going over the end of the 3D printed bobbin um, there's not much um, room for manoeuvre in terms of tightening up the tension. The spring is pretty much at the sort of hook. Um, I'm not explaining it very well, but um, I can use these, which is brilliant because I have a whole selection of these in different colours coming soon. And my Ashford wheel is currently on display um, in the new shop premises. So I haven't actually got it to spin on at the moment. I'm not sure how this will work, um, if at all, on the tensioned Lazy Kate. Um, so I think I'm going to throw it on the Lazy Kate, but maybe not under tension and then ply onto here. Um, I did originally think I'd spin on here, wind off onto one of these. But of course, because it's been a couple of days, I couldn't resist and I've started um, another, another spin. <laughs> um, so I've already spun up 50 grams of the um, fibre that I purchased from Curio Yarns. Uh, it's a no-name braid and I showed it off on last week's vlog, I think. Um, so yeah, 50 grams and there's still tons of space on there. Um, so I don't have a spare bobbin <laughs> to wind off and then ply onto. So, well, this is my, my spare bobbin, but I'm gonna need it to ply onto. I've got the two fibers that were in the, that were the samples that came with the wheel. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna ply these together for a really fun sort of bright green and white yarn. Um, I feel like I might have got a little bit more in terms of meterage out of this second one, um, but it's hard to know for sure because the bobbins are um, such different sizes. Um, obviously, it looks like I've got more, but it, it, it may not be the case. We shall see, it's all an experiment. So I've unplugged the e-spinner and I've propped it up on the end um, so that I can easily show you the um, control setup for the spinner. Um, so this is where you power on the spinner on and off. Um, obviously the light lights up when it does have power to it, which it doesn't at the moment. Um, this center knob is how you control the speed. And um, this was what I was playing with when I first started spinning, when I was not getting enough twist. Um, I needed to dial up the speed. And I dialed it um, to around about there, I think, for those samples that I was spinning. Um, as you can see, I've actually dialed the speed up even more for the fibre that I'm currently spinning. It's a blend that has some linen and flax in it. And I've already learned so much about the e-spinner and I've got different thoughts um, about it um, from spinning the blend that I'm spinning at the moment. But I think I, this video is gonna be long enough um, so I might chat about that on my vlog this week. Um, and then this final control um, determines the way that the flyer spins. So Z twist and S twist. And obviously I've been spinning my singles Z. You can't really see, but the button is sort of pushed down. Um, when I ply, I'm gonna need to switch that up to the S. So we're going in the opposite direction. And actually I'll do that now <laughs> so that I um, don't forget. So yeah, if we just flip this over, because we've got a bit better light now, you'll be able to hopefully see all of the bits and pieces. Um, it's got quite an easy mechanism for locking the flyer in place. Um, obviously the um, orifice slots through that of front clasp and then you just pull out the back. So I'm a bit awkward because I'm doing this one-handed. Um, but you probably... I'm not going to be able to, to show you that, um, but there's like a little notch in the top um, of this um, arm that goes into the back of the spinner. And there's a uh, sort of 
flat bit on the flyer um, so you kind of match those two up when you um, slot that in uh, again I'm not making this look easy it is easy it's just I'm trying to do it one-handed um, and then if I just flip this over again so you can see all of the parts um, obviously we've got the uh, sort of casing for the motor and um, that's the tensioning knob there um, and then in the back you've got where you pop your power supply and also where you pop the cord for the brake pedal so yeah that was all the parts the bits and the controls of the e-spinner hopefully you were able to see that fairly clearly um, we had a little bit better light today um, it's still quite early on Sunday morning um, so we don't have the best of lights in the living room but it is much better than the um, sort of overhead light that I had on when I first started spinning the other day but, um, these bobbins on to the lazy Kate haven't set up the tensioning yet but I shall do that now, see if I can work it so that I can get the tensioning to work with this bobbin as well. Um, I definitely should be able to because this bobbin has the sort of side groove in that I can um, fit that uh, sort of nylon tensioning cord, but it's just whether I will have enough room to tighten it around that and how it will be affected by the different size bobbins, but we'll give it a go. Um, sorry, I'm not looking at you because I'm already starting to play. <laughs> Okay, so getting ready for plying then. Um, so I'm just going to slide my bobbin onto the flyer. Um, I'm going to find that little notch and slip that in, push that down. And I need a leader. Do I have a bit of scrap yarn? Just to set up the lazy Kate under tension, you're probably not gonna be able to see, but I've got the um, nylon cord going around the back of both of those bobbins. So. We'll see how that works out. I'm just going to put that off to the side. Well, thread up, oops, leader. So far, I've used this side um, of the flyer to thread through. So I think just for variety, I'll use the other side. <laughs> So I'm going to turn the speed down um, to start with until I figure out um, a little bit of how this is going to go. Let's grab the ends of these. Might be a tad too tight. See, I have no idea what this, I'm assuming this bit in the middle is kind of a yarn guide. I don't know if you can see that, there's a sort of loop through the middle, hopefully that kind of keeps the yarns apart. So I'm just going to loop the two ends through that and switch this on, see how we go. Okay, so I'm getting a twist again, but not really feeding on. So I might just have to, oh, it's feeding on a little bit now. I've stopped, of course. helping hand to get going. Maybe it's just the leader twisting round. Okay, so I'm getting plenty of twist in there, but it's not feeding on, so let's... Oh, of course it's not feeding on because I don't actually have... <laughs> Brake band over the back of the bobbin. That would help, and um, so that would probably help quite a lot. So let's just give that another try. Yeah, there we go. That helps, doesn't it? Oh, my singles have already broken. I was a bit afraid of this, particularly with the white ones. Um, having that, so I might actually take the tension right off of that because um, I know particularly with this white one where I was getting started the singles were fairly weak in places so let's just bring that up and through and join that in again. It's not going to 
going to be the neatest of joins. I feel like maybe my lazy cake is not quite in the right place. I feel like I'm sort of dragging it across and back just to pull it forward again. So maybe I need to move it a little bit over off to the back of me or side of me. But we'll go with it. That's how we started. Okay, so um, this yarn um, keeps breaking. Obviously, it's very under-twisted um, as I was trying to get used to the spinner. Um, but I slowed the speed right down and didn't put as much pressure on this yarn as I was pulling it off of the bobbin. And that seemed to work. So I was holding the two singles here in my hands and letting the twist sort of build up quite a lot in this part, um, but on a slower basis before letting it wind on to the um, bob in here and um, so I'm going to employ that tactic which means um, the playing will be fairly slow so I'm not going to make you sit here for the probably 10-15 minutes that it's going to take me I could put this back through the wheel and um, to add more twist but this just a fun kind of sample skein so I'm not going to um, worry about it too much I'll um, just employ that tactic of doing a really slow ply um, so I'll put you on time lapse So there we go, my first attempt at plying on the e-spinner. Um, I took the Lazy Kate off of tension and um, that one weak spot seemed to be the worst bit of that skein. Um, I did have one point where the green and the white um, happened to break at exactly the same time. Um, the green only broke that once. Um, I did a little bit of a cheat and just knotted it on. I know that's um, not a... <laughs> <laughs> great spinning practice but as this is just a sample skein and I wanted to get through it um, I wasn't worrying about um, making it perfect uh, so yeah I've got um, a cute little sort of a green and white barber pulled little um, sample of yarn so I'm going to wind that off um, there's some bright sunshine out there even if it is a bit cold so I think if I get that into soak I can probably um, have a little sample mini skein or washed and dried um, fairly quickly and ready to knit with so uh, yeah so yeah I think um, that probably just about wraps things up for this video my first foray into um, working with my new e-spinner I hope you've enjoyed coming along on the journey with me um, I've already learnt a lot um, just by making those um, couple of little samples things that I need to improve on and I think I'm taking those lessons into the um, next spin that I'm doing which as I say I'll do some more on this today and I'll chat about it more on this week's vlog. I'll look forward to sharing more adventures with my e-spinner in the weeks and months to come um, but I think for now I'm going to call this video a wrap and end it here. Hopefully the final shot you will see is perhaps um, a finished little sample skein um, of the yarn that we've just spun and plied but until we get to spend time together again I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great big bully hugs to you all. Bye for now.